Hey guys, I'm back for Arms Day, and apparently so are a bunch of other people. Let's get started. Alright, the first one is Zerenia D, which is the, uh, the Haka machine gun. Now ideally you want a, a gun that has high stability when you're dealing with these Haka uh, auto rifles, pulse rifles, really anything Haka is going to have low stability. But this is an interesting, an interesting uh, build that I haven't seen before. I didn't really see focused fire a lot before this. Um, I feel like this could potentially be a really strong auto rifle. The combination of high caliber rounds and focused fire is is very strong. And with focused fire, you won't have to worry so much about stability. And you also have small bore in case you do want to worry about stability. It seems like it could be powerful. However, the danger is that focused fire has a tendency to lower your DPS by a lot. When you lower the um, the firing rate by that much, uh, you end up doing more damage per headshot, sure, but you do less damage overall per magazine. So if you were hitting headshots before without focused fire, then focused fire is not going to help your gun. That being said, I think this is an interesting build, so I definitely am going to pick up the Zerenia D to try it out. The other options are not stellar this week, and frankly the Zerenia D isn't the best auto rifle ever in the first place, so I don't feel bad about picking this one up. Don't know if it scares the, the next one is the Suros ARI-41. It has a few interesting builds. The first one is the Hidden Hand build, which on an auto rifle increases the hitbox on your enemy which is kinda nice. It comes with reinforced barrel, which I think is awful though, because it has reduced stability. And perfect balance, which is kind of negating the reinforced barrel. Um, you could run speed reload instead, which is nice. So this could be a very solid gun for you if you run with speed reload and perfect balance. Um, and hidden hand's never a bad option on a gun, but personally I don't think it's uh, overwhelming enough to pick it over, say, this one, which is Hammer Forged, uh, Snapshot, and Outlaw. You're probably not going to be using Rifled Barrel, but the auto rifles do have a problem with range. You can see how, how much Rifled Barrel increases it by. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get this one. The only issue is now you have zero stability buffs on your auto rifle. Suros guns are pretty high in stability in the first place, so you might not have to worry about it, but... Uh, as far as this gun goes, I think this is probably the best build for today. The other build just did not have decent perks. The chance to return a portion of the magazine after an assist isn't good enough to warrant the high caliber rounds or snapshot or injection mold. Which is sad because these are otherwise really good perks. Um, so I'd go ahead and pick up that one in the middle. Again, you're not really missing out on much because these auto rifles aren't the end all be all to auto rifles. so. It's not like you were saving it anyway. And then you've seen me save this stupid Suros JLB-47 rocket launcher for forever, and it's finally going to pay off. The grenades and horseshoes perk is here. You're obviously not going to need perfect balance or single point sling, so it's not a bad idea to pick up the other one that comes with javelin and flared magwell which is not bad. It also has hard launch and confined launch, regardless of how you want to play it. Obviously, hard launch, in my opinion, is going to be better. With flared magwell, grenades and horseshoes, and javelin, you have yourself a monster Suros JLB-47. This is the gun to pick up for the rocket launcher build. And I think after you play with it, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Now I've got two other characters to buy stuff on. If you watch these early in the mornings, then I have to apologize for these long waits where you have to watch me play through the load screens. I hate that Bungie doesn't let us buy all of our packages on one player, but I also understand why they do that. Um, if you don't watch them in the morning and you watch them later, then you watch them probably after I edit all of this stuff out through the YouTube editor. I like to get these videos up as quickly as possible because I know a lot of you do watch them early on um, and then edit them through the YouTube editor instead of what I normally edit them through. So it ends up being, uh, it ends up taking a little longer for the editing to take, to take effect. It 
So you've got the Lead Mila D, which is a Haka pulse rifle, and the Tuanella SR4, which is the jury equivalent. All right, on the Warlock, I have the Lead Mila D, which is a Haka pulse rifle, and I've got the the Amalan Uzumi RR4, which is a sniper rifle, and the Amalan Tuanella SR4, which is the scout rifle. All right, let's get started. Um, the Lead Mila is honestly pretty bad now. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you pick up because after the pulse rifle nerf, uh, Haka pulse rifles are pretty much the worst guns you can get. That said, um, they're not as bad in PvE. So if you wanted to run, say, uh, fitted stock, high caliber rounds, feeding frenzy, and crowd control for a PvE build, that's pretty good. You're not worried as much about stability because the enemies are a little easier to hit. And you don't have to worry about head seeker or anything like that. I say just go ahead and pick something up for PvE or immediately dismantle it for marks because you're not going to be winning any firefights in PvP with any of the Haka pulse rifles anymore. The Uzumi RR4 got nerfed pretty hard. There's no more luck in the chamber on any of these sniper rifles. Um, or, I guess there is, but it's not, uh, it's not what it used to be. It only works now on precision kills. So it looks like the Amalon snipers are now going to be pretty worthless. Um, I think if you're going to pick one up, though, this is one of the higher rate of fire variants. You could probably use Zen Moment, Outlaw, and... Uh, and single point sling and have a pretty good time playing with uh, with this sniper. I'd say go ahead and pick this one up if you bought it. It's under the cloak, okay. And then the Tuanella SR4, we've got one with Firefly now. Um, this is a pretty good one for PvE. Again, if you're using this scout rifle, you're using it for PvE. And I mean, this isn't bad. Life support, Firefly. Small bore, single point sling, and then the other one is Firefly, rifled magazine, extended magazine, or rifled barrel, extended magazine, and rescue mag. I personally don't like these more than the hung jury, so I'm just going to keep holding it. And I might just hold it forever. Let's check out my Titan now. If you're wondering how I got the emblem, it is the new King's Fall Challenge Mode emblem. And you can pick it up from playing the King's Fall Challenge Mode Oryx fight. If you don't know how to do that, I have a cute video that I put out yesterday on how we did it, and we think it's probably the easiest strategy by far uh, that King's Fall has had to offer yet. If I sound kind of bad it's because I do have a little bit of a sickness but that's not going to stop me from sharing my knowledge with you. I don't think the germs can spread through the computer anyway. Sniper rifle. Ooh the Arminius D. I'm so excited about this gun. I think it's going to be really good once we get a good roll on it. Alright, the Titan's back with the PDX-45, the Arminius D, and I think a shotgun? Let's find out. The Arminius D is a gun that I'm still really excited about. I still haven't found, uh, uh it doesn't look like there's a build today with, um, with something that I would want to play. 
so I'm going to keep waiting, I think, but this is the same archetype as the Necrochasm, and I feel like once we get a really good roll on it, it's going to be a real monster, because if you haven't played with the Necrochasm since year one, uh, it has been buffed pretty hard. I think if you just have to pick it up this week, the first roll is probably the best one, with High Caliber Rounds, Rangefinder, and Surrounded, or you can run with Braced Frame instead of High Caliber Rounds. Um, practically doubling its stability. This is a solid gun. Uh, I just don't think that Surrounded is good enough in PvP to warrant using. Next we have the Suros PDX-45. Um, one with Head Seeker, which is new, and one with increased stability. Uh, fitted stock and counterbalance. Keep in mind that counterbalance does not increase stability, it, increase, it decreases recoil, which is a little different. It lines up that recoil so it's more vertical instead of going off to the left. This is a really good PDX-45. I think this is probably uh, the most stability intensive one that we've seen yet. The other option for today is the Headseeker one if you're into the Headseeker variants for Pulse Rifles, but personally I don't think the extra damage justifies missing a headshot twice. Um, I would just rather hit all three headshots if it were me, especially since the PDX-45 has such high stability. Being able to hit one body shot followed by two headshots is really difficult. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to hit all three shots wherever you aim. I think it's a very easy choice this week. If you're going to pick up the PDX-45, pick up the third one uh, with that high stability and counterbalance. And then finally we have the sniper rifle. This is the Haka sniper rifle. I have not seen this one yet, so I don't know uh, exactly which build I would go with, but I will say, based on the stats that I'm seeing, I don't think this is going to be your end-all, be-all uh, sniper rifle. Uh, the aim assist probably isn't high enough to warrant using, if you're one of those people who relies on the stickiness of the reticle, um, which is a lot of you. That's pretty much how you snipe in Destiny. And, frankly, these perks aren't great. Unflinching is probably the best one here, but I don't think unflinching is good enough to... Uh, to warrant using. This one does come with Snapshot though. Snapshot and Quick Draw are the best rolls you can get on a sniper rifle. Um, oh, wrong one. So, yeah, I mean, I guess if you wanted to run your sniper rifle for PvE, you could run the Surplus one, but I don't know. This sniper rifle didn't impress me. Um, this week, and I think I'm just going to hang on to it. If you want to buy guns for next week, then you can see that the Arminius D is on sale again, which is amazing, because I really do think this gun is going to be amazing. The Uferna HC4 is a hand cannon. Hand cannons um, have been kind of a little bit buggy after the patch, just because uh, if you have two consecutive shots, they tend to miss, uh, which is a little weird because they said they fixed that, but, you know, this this one's not a bad one if you're going to be using a hand cannon, I just don't think it's the best one. The Herja D is a pulse rifle from Haka, you should avoid this at all costs. The Izumi RR4, you saw it today, it's a subpar sniper rifle, you could just as easily get a thousand yards there. And then the Irene RR4 has been nerfed so badly. The only one worth picking up this week is Arminius D, uh, which you've been holding on to. If you want to cash in one of your Arminius Ds, go ahead and cash in, uh, I guess, this one, the Rangefinder one, with Braced Frame and Rangefinder and Surrounded, and just play with it. And if you think that it's a really fun gun to use, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play with this one, and then I'm going to pick it up again and see if, uh, if it's fun enough to warrant using twice. Not a lot of great rolls this week, or not a lot of uh, uh, great guns to pick up this week, but I will pick up all five just to help you out next week if you do want to play with any of these five guns. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.